What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex, my name is Travis. Today's video we're going to be doing an update here on the 300 and as the title states it's also going to be a slash rambling video since I haven't posted any content in the last week and a half. So I figured I'd talk about kind of what you guys missed and what's going on with all that. So uh, first things first, the reason why I didn't post any content and if you're following the community tab here on YouTube, which I'm just kind of getting the hang of, um, I've been sick. I know that the kids started school I don't know, about a, what, a month ago, maybe. Maybe a month ago. I don't know. Anyways, uh, they just bring it home all their damn germs. All three of the kids end up getting croup, couldn't breathe, had to bring them to the ER. And it wasn't just all at one day. It was like consecutive days. It was pretty bad. Um, and then Saturday morning, last Saturday morning, I ended up having to go to the ER because I couldn't breathe. And I uh, had bronchitis and sinus infection and all sorts of crap. So I'm kind of getting through that whole process it was a very long week I didn't get a lot done but I still managed to get the orders out and kind of keep things alive here in the fish room but other than that it was a really really crappy week um, but I have to look at the positive side is that I'm glad that it happened last week and not in the middle of archery season while I'm trying to sit in the tree so I uh, gotta be thankful for that at least um, now when it comes to the 300 you guys I, I was looking at some of the comments I'm trying to get into the comment section and answer your guys's questions or at least Give you a link to a video that I posted with the answer to your question. So I saw a couple of you guys ask, uh, you know, how the 300s going? Is anything dead? How's the DKH? So um, yeah, the 300, nothing's dead. Uh, everything is doing pretty well. I wouldn't say it's at its peak performance, but it's definitely um, doing pretty well. Right now, I'm currently at 8.2 DKH or 8.7. And speaking of that, um, somebody asked me on Instagram what lot number I was getting the. Uh, I got to hear the. Um, the weird reading from it is actually lot uh, 8124 which is showing 8.2 DKH and then my um, previous lot number uh, is showing um, 8.7 and he had the exact same lot number as the one that's showing the lower number so it could be that batch even though um, Hannah said that it wasn't um, anything that they've got reports on but it could I could just be the first one who noticed it who knows but it's a half a point off which is acceptable to a certain extent uh, and uh, yeah so 8.2 or 8.7 tank's been at that for about uh, four or five days and it's doing pretty well um, growth is starting to kick up a lot of coralline algae is growing at the bottom of the new 40 gallon um, shallow reef I want to show you guys it but it's I haven't cleaned the glass even on the 300 I haven't cleaned the glass so it's pretty dirty but there is a uh, a lot of coralline algae starting to grow all the corals are doing really well um, and it's just uh, yeah what's up dudes yeah I gotta feed you I know Anyways, I, uh, on top of that, I went ahead and did a 50-gallon water change, siphoned out the detritus out of that tank, and then just kind of uh, move, some, move some things around here in the 300, which I'll show you in just a second, and just basically trying to get my nutrients back to where they are. Um, so speaking of nutrients, I'm at uh, 0.07 of phosphates, which was a little high. It was a little high last week. I think it was at uh, 1.5, so I brought it down zero, my normal 0.07, and then my nitrates are still sky high. They're, you know, they're, they're like 20 something, something like that. It was really, really high. And then now they're a little lower, but not definitely still not within my five PPM. That's for sure. Um, the reason for that is I added uh, more fish. I got through quarantine. I put them in the uh, 40 gallon and I also kind of moved fish around between the, uh, the frag system and that 40 gallon just to kind of based on aggression. So I am feeding more than I usually am because I still got to keep all these guys happy as well. So I'm adjusting that. So that's where I'm getting the elevated uh, nitrates, um, it is what it is. It's not a huge deal. It will fix itself over time. And the, t the tank right now is just kind of in the process of adjusting back to uh, what it originally was. And the doorbell's ringing, and it's probably going to come through my phone. Ooh, I don't know. It is what it is. Is it coming through? Yes, yeah, someone's at my door. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. It was the mailman dropping off spikes, uh, mealworms. And uh, speaking of spike, I'm going to uh, do a whole um, lizard scape of his uh, 40 uh, breeder tank for you guys and uh, kind of talk about how I grow food for them and all that stuff. It'll be, uh, it's going to be on the channel. It's not fish related, but it is pet related and uh, some of you guys like that stuff. So uh, yeah, that video will be out uh, hopefully uh, soon. Now, uh, anyway, we were talking about nutrients and uh, how we got the levels are just kind of a little high on nitrates. Now, when it comes to uh, just the nitrates and letting the tank do its thing, I am going to just do another 50 gallon water change before I head out for archery next week or the week after. Um, and that's just going to be my kind of my final water change for the month and then just kind of let the tank do its own thing probably not going to clean the glass or do anything at least until i uh, fill the tags and i start making content again i'm just going to let the tank go on autopilot and kind of fix itself 
from our little uh, drop in alkalinity from a week and a half or two weeks ago. Um, but uh, anyways, let's go and move on to some of the things that I've moved. Uh, if you guys remember, I used to have a bunch of hammers and uh, some frog spawn on a uh, rock there. As you can see, I moved one of them onto the rock back there. And uh, I figured, because I had this empty space over here, um, I went ahead and put the hammers on the side. It is cloudy or foggy from the uh, glass. What's up, dudes? And then I put the uh, other uh, frog spawn there. So that's a good spot. It kind of fills in and gives a little bit more movement. It's not too close where the hammer is going to touch it, but eventually if they do, or not, the torch touches it. But if they get too close, we all know that the torch is going to win that battle, unfortunately. But they're good now, and it does kind of fill in the area uh, pretty well. I'll give you guys a side shot here. You see the glass is pretty dirty. Um, thing is, is I wanted to make this video today, and if I didn't want the tank to be cloudy, I kind of had to skip on cleaning the glass. If I cleaned the glass, I would have had to wait uh, several hours for it to be clear enough for the video to actually look decent. So I uh, couldn't do that today, so the, it is uh, you know cloudy. Um, another thing that I have to do is I have to come in here and snip this Monty, this plating Monty. As you guys can see, it's pretty close to the glass. Can't get the magnet through there. Every time I touch it, it moves the whole rock structure. Um, it's gotta go, and I don't really know how I'm gonna do it yet. Probably just gonna come in here and trim out all this back here on the top, this purple, and then just come in here and like cut a huge chunk of this so it'll eventually fit through. And that stuff sells pretty quick, especially that green with a purple rim um, Montepore, that sells really fast. Um, so it is what it is, it, it just, the way it grows. I have mentioned before that I don't really care too much for the purple Monty just because it is, it just kills everything. And it was, you know, I have a big, big chunk of it over here, again, just killing everything. And it's starting to wrap itself around the uh, green digi. You can't really see it, but it's right there. It's just wrapping itself around. So we'll see how long that digi lasts. Um, and uh, on a side note, we are finally out of the water with our uh, green Acropora stack one there. Finally. Yep. I was. I always wondered what if the. Uh, the Cali Tort that I removed that huge chunk, if you guys remember that. I wonder who would have won that battle. Um, but, you know, we did bring, put a little piece of Cali Tort back in there. So we'll see how that grows. And I also put a frag of it over here. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to cut that soon because I don't know how long it's going to uh, do well with it being exposed. Every time I feed, it hangs out of the water for about 20 minutes, too. So uh, we'll see if it starts, you know, STN and they're not doing really well. I'll uh, cut it. But, I mean, it's getting some serious parks. In fact, we're at like six something seven something right there so just imagine when it's getting at that uh that surface and we got the light right there let's see if i can get that thing i mean it's getting it's getting slammed but it's not dead so that's all right um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to show you guys. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I don't think I made any other changes. Oh, yeah, one more. Um, the only coral that is kind of showing any issues with the tank is this big green green stag now the issue is is it's getting kind of killed by everything and it's getting shaded out basically the story of my life when it comes to this tank and this aquascape um it's starting to stn a little bit on the inside in the far back of there you're gonna have a hard time seeing it not only because it's dark but there's fish in the way uh excuse me but uh yeah so it's stning on the inside there there's nothing i can do we got uh, uh, a, burn, a barney coral back there and we got this purple acro they're just they're shading out there's no light getting through it's also getting hit by the green slimer another acro on the back it's getting hit by the duncans getting hit by our duncans getting hit by uh, candy canes this is, not only is it getting shaded out so um nature's taking its course we'll see what happens i would hate to lose that that whole colony because it, it i mean it takes up some serious real real estate but i think it's going to be kind of like the uh the other corals here that are that basically this is all stn'd out and it's just it's still alive it just got shaded and you know it's, it's stn but it's doing well it's still growing um i'd really hate to lose that whole colony but we'll kind of see how the tank does um when it comes to the future of aquascaping you guys know that i am trying a new type of aquascape here with the uh the 40 the 40 gallon tank and that's going to kind of be my test for the new system when we upgrade from this um i'm still going to keep this pillar look when we put this tank upstairs and we upgrade to the new one and I want to try something new with that new uh, tank because I don't like how, I mean, the tank is not even two years old and it's basically 
it's you know li live or die man trying to keep everything alive it's uh it's very difficult the way that it's set up even though the pillars really add some depth and once they fill in they look really good it just sucks for coral growth especially when you get some of these colonies like this this uh blue polyp here this guy man or this um yellow yellow tip blue polyp yeah i mean this guy was just a little bitty and he was fine and then he's like oh let me just grow the shit ton and uh kill everything underneath me so uh yeah you can't really, you don't really know how well a coral's gonna do until it really starts growing. You can get an idea of how they're gonna grow, what shape they're gonna be, and stuff like that, so that helps determine where you put them. But I knew how that coral was gonna grow, but I didn't think it was gonna get that massive that quickly and then just start taking over and flattening out everything. I mean, it kind of gives you an idea how big those are. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see uh, how that uh, growing out goes in that 40 gallon tank, and I probably will use something similar in the new tank to help spread the colonies out more and cut down on shading and kind of, uh, you know, longevity. The next tank that I do is going to be a uh, very, it's not going to be a two or three year old tank when I take it down. It's going to be something that's uh, for many, many years, God willing, anyways. Um, and, uh, I want it to last. I don't want to, you know, I'm, as much as I enjoy kind of bouncing around and taking down a tank every two or three years, uh, it's cool to a certain extent, but I don't like starting over all the time, even though I, I kind of do and I don't, but um, it just sucks when I put all that time in and corals are growing and doing great, and then they just start taking each other out. Um, you know, first you know, first world problems right there, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, uh, fish are doing good. Everybody is uh, is alive eating this guy this guy's getting huge the people on instagram are still sending the pictures of or the video of remember when he had the glue stuck in his mouth and he was just this little little bitty and i was pulling the glue out of his mouth i mean look at the size of him now it's freaking crazy he's, he's a big boy i mean he's got to be i don't know nine inches something like that i don't know but either way he's definitely the biggest fish in the tank but uh yeah other than that everything is good i did put up my last uh few corals from uh, my imported system on the website i do have um just a couple left that i'm waiting to open up um, i just moved them um and those will go up and then that will be it and then i will let you guys know when i get more in for the imported system and when all that stuff gets updated which won't be until after uh, hunting season uh for the rest of i guess next week is my last week before i head out i will be um I'll do probably one or two content videos, like a Q&A and probably another type of video um, along the lines of that, more beginner oriented. And uh, and then I'll do my final video of me saying, yo, peace out. I'll see you guys when I'm done hunting. And I mean, it could be as simple. You guys, for those of you who do hunt, uh, it, you know, you can go out the first day and fill all your damn tags. I have three this year. Um, and it, you know, it happened the first day and I'll be back that Monday or it will take a month and a half. Who knows? It'll take two months. Um, but either way, I won't, I will not be back until after all three tags are filled i will be posting on instagram pictures and all sorts of stuff so if you want to follow me and kind of keep track of what's going on you can check out the instagram i don't just look up fish of hex on there and you'll find me um but yeah that's it i'm gonna let you guys go uh voices getting kind of crackly and we're at nine more minutes so uh yeah i'll see you guys later enjoy the weekend and uh yep see you monday tuesday of next week all right peace